Hey guys, um, all right, this video is just for the definitions of section 2.3, okay, continuity. So the general idea for continuity, continuity, is any, oh, that doesn't look like an any, okay, so is any function, let's call it y equals f of x, that can be graphed without lifting up your pencil. Okay, that means it has no holes, okay, no asymptotes, and it has no jumps. Okay, so the general idea is continuity means continuous. Okay, simple and very important. Technical definitions for continuity at a point. So first let's talk about interior point. If f of x is continuous, let's not start with f. Okay, let's just start out with f of x is continuous continuous okay at x equal to some value let's call it c if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches c equal to f of c, okay? And we have seen this before, right? This is the very first definition of limits. So if it is continuous, okay, at a point, in this case, it's the interior point, not the endpoints. If you can do the algebraic, which is f of c, and it equals its limits, okay? Then let's talk about the endpoints, okay? So we are going to go and talk about the endpoints. So here we go. And then we'll draw a picture. So tie it all together. Endpoint. One. F is continuous at the left end point. Let's call it x equals to a, if and only if the limit of f of x, okay, or we could say f of x is right here, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right equals to f of a, okay? And we're going to draw the picture right here in this box, okay? So just be patient and we'll tie it all together. Case number two, f of x or f. It's continuous at the right endpoint if and only if well let's let's leave it a variable right endpoint x equal to b how about that okay if and only if f Oh, if the limits, I should say, if the limits of f of x as x approaches b from the left equals f of b. Okay? So let's draw a picture. You ready? To put these things together. Let's draw it all in quad one. So let's make x and y coordinate. Let's make a, a random curve, close dot here. Wah! Okay, there you go. Sorry, this is supposed to be smooth and continuous. That is definitely not smooth looking. All right, so 
Whee, there you go. That looks good, right? So let's give this right here A and this right here B, okay? So what I'm really talking about is let's talk about something in the middle, like interior, okay? So let's find interior point. Interior means in the middle of this graph. So let's call this C, right? How about right here? Looks good, right? So if this is A right here, this is F of A, okay? That's F of A. And if this is B all the way here, that means this all the way over here is F of B, okay? So the endpoint says this, okay? The endpoint says F of X is continuous as the left endpoint. So here's the left side. Would you agree? Left side of the graph. This guy. Okay, so if it's continuous at the left endpoint, let's call it X equals A. If and only if, okay, if and only if, the right-hand derivative is exactly the same thing as F of A, okay? Because, class, this is a closed circle right here, okay, I do have an F of A. F of A does exist, okay? And the right-hand derivative also exists, and they do happen to be exactly the same value. So right there, that right there, the endpoint is continuous. Oh, I just deleted it. Oh, man. How do I undo? Here. Yes, okay. So... Right there, that endpoint does exist. The left endpoint exists. Now let's talk about the right endpoint, this guy, right side, okay? Right end point, okay? Let's call it B, okay? And the definition said, well, the right endpoint is continuous if and only if you can find F of B, okay? Well, because this is a closed circle, totally. I can totally find F of V. Then it says here, well, that means then the left-hand limit. Left-hand limit, it's, that means I'm coming from the left-hand side. Whoa, 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 right? Left-hand limits means I'm coming from the left-hand side, and they both do happen to end at the same spot. Okay, so therefore, based on this graph, the endpoint exists. Okay, now in the middle, I'm giving it a C variable. C, that's C, so that means this, this guy right here is F of C, okay? Because this is a smooth and continuous curve, that means the algebra, the algebraic value of f of c exists, right? And the derivative, not the, I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong word, the limits of as x opposed to c also exist. So that's why if it's continuous, then all of these should be true, okay? Now, let me give you something that doesn't, is not true at, at the endpoints, okay? So this is just another makeup graph. So if it doesn't work out, let me know. All right. So what, what would it look like if you don't have an endpoint that's continuous? Kind of like this, okay? Here's A. This guy over here is A. This guy over here is B, okay? So right here, because the endpoints are open, okay? That means the limits exist, but f of b, okay, because it's a whole, it does not exist. So therefore, the, these endpoints are not continuous, okay? So that's the difference between um, the continuous endpoints and not continuous endpoints. So I'm going to make a note, oh, come on, make a note right here that not continuous at the two endpoints, okay? Because F of B and F of A, they do not exist, okay? Now let's move on to this second set of definitions. Continuous on an interval. So a function is continuous on an interval from A to B inclusive, if and only if it is continuous at every point on that interval.
Okay, and what do we call those? Those are called discontinuity. So the first kind we're going to have is a hole. Now a hole sometimes is also called a removable discontinuity. Okay, and hole is the only one that can be called a removable discontinuity. So what is the definition? When the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. Okay, when it exists, but not equal to f of c. Okay, so when it has a limit, but it does not equal to the algebraic value. For example, i.e., for example, f of x equals x minus 1 all over x minus 1 times x plus 2, okay. Now, as you can see, before I go and find the limit, okay, I should definitely reduce, right? So right here, I now have f of x after reducing 1 over x plus 2. Now, what's happening at this? Because it is reduced, now we have a hole at x equal to positive 1, okay? And if I want to know exactly where the hole is at, I can plug back this over here. So f of positive 1 is 1 over 1 plus 2, which is 1 third. So I know there will be a hole at 1 comma 1 third, okay? So what's happening is that, hey, the limits will exist, okay? So I'm going to write the limits really quickly. The limits as x approaches, okay, at x approaches c, whatever the c is, let's call it, in this case, c is 1, okay, of this function, x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x plus 2, okay. Currently, okay, currently if I plug in 1, would you agree that this will give me 0? then if that's zero, then I can't do anything. So that's why we always reduce, factor and reduce, if we can't substitute right away. So that's why this is now just one over x plus two. Now I can plug it in. All right, so the limit exists at one over three. But I can't just straight up, right? I can't, I can't plug in f of one to the original, okay? So that's why it wasn't going to happen. So I have a limit, but because f of 1 does not exist, okay, again, f of 1 does not exist, the limits exist in 1 third. So that's why we have a hole at 1 and 1 third. Okay? Two, infinite discontinuity. Okay, this is not removable. So here's the definition. The limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist because, because, let's move up, f, because, sorry, because the limit, because the limit as x approaches c from the right of this function equals to positive or negative infinity, okay? And, or the limit as x approaches c from the left of this sem function equals to positive or negative infinity as well, or both, okay? Or both, okay? All right. So, the infinite discontinuity is when the limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist, does not exist because the right-hand limit is going to get closer and closer to positive and negative infinity, or the left-hand limits get closer and closer to positive or negative infinity, or both.
Okay, so I should put in an or right here. Okay. All right, next. We have a jump. A jump is another type of discontinuity. And again, it's not removable. So a jump is when the limit as x approaches c from the right of your function does not equal to the limit as x equals c from the left of f of x. Okay. Uh, oh, look at this. I spelled limit from scratch. Look at that. Let me just correct that limit. Okay. Okay, so this is what's happening here is, let me just remind you, okay? What's happening here is, let me give you a picture and then kind of go in details of what a jump is. Think of a jump as like the step function, okay? So, or something that looks like this. I'm gonna have this this way, that that way, okay? So as you can see, the right-hand limit, okay, has a value. Left-hand limit has a value. They are just not the same. So what is this is both left and right hand limits exist, okay? And I'm gonna write and finite number, not infinity, finite number. They're just not, but not equals each other. not equal to each other, okay? All right, last type of discontinuity is oscillation. Okay, oscillating discontinuity. Okay, so the last type. So this is when the limit of x approaches c of f of x does not exist because we cannot determine due to too many changes or oscillation. Okay, so changes. All right, so that's the last type. And remember the oscillation was the one that like it kept going like that. Remember this changes really a lot, okay? And it looks more like that, okay? So that's oscillation, okay? All right, and I believe this is going to stop right here.